In today's video, we will be going through the 2010 American action horror film Legion. Spoilers ahead, you have been warned. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, comment on what your favorite part was, and subscribe to our channel for more. The movie begins as a woman narrates how her overly religious mother and her overprotective father made her pray every night, trying to make her follow God's footsteps. The scene changes and a half-man, half-bird, half-mythical creature person drops from the sky. A fallen angel, if you will, but he cuts off his wings right after to blend in with the humans, so no more fallen angel. He goes to a rusty toy shop, kills its owner, and stitches his post-wings wounds himself. We don't know why he is on Earth yet. The man then somehow gets into a gun factory and collects as many as he can. The scene cuts to two policemen driving home from work. They talk about how they want to kill the homeless people in the streets, claiming that they are just a commodity to rich people. Just then, an explosion takes place and the angel man from earlier approaches them. The two do police things, drop everything in your hands, put your hands up, and so on. The angel man says he doesn't have time for this and in the blink of an eye takes one of the men hostage. Suddenly, the other one starts moving aggressively, like really aggressively, especially his head. When he stops, his pupils are fully dilated and his teeth are as sharp as a razor. The angel man's friend has taken over him, you know, just everyday entity things. The possessed man then tells the angel man, this is not what you were sent here for. The angel man claims he follows his own rules. The possessed man replies with his bullet going right through the hostage policeman. The angel man then kills the possessed one and flees. Somewhere else, the movie's nice guy, Jeep, wakes up because of a nightmare. The guy lives in a tiny vehicle-like situation with a pregnant woman. No, she is not his girlfriend and that is not his child. He just likes to take care of them as any nice guy would. Not to mention, Jeep is the woman's boss's son. The boss owns a diner, the pregnant woman Charlie is the waitress, and Jeep the nice guy is the helper boy. The woman is planning to give the baby up for adoption because 1. She lives in a tiny vehicle with her boss Bob and his son, 2. The baby has no daddy. The diner is weirdly in the middle of nowhere but is always mildly busy. The cook Percy is a religious man who is best friends with Bob. Also, Bob is an atheist so their relationship is great. A couple sits at the diner enjoying their meal looking over their teenage daughter, Audrey, nearby. The mother Sandra makes a snarky comment about Audrey's skirt being too short. Audrey claps back with a snarkier comment. I wonder who she got that from. A bypasser stops at the diner and sees eight months pregnant Charlie smoking outside. He minds his own business and asks her for directions. Charlie vaguely says that the place he is going is far, far away from here. The man tries his best not to comment about the cigarette and being pregnant situation, but in the end tells her she shouldn't do that, only to be reminded to mind his own business. He goes inside and asks for a phone to call someone while Audrey's father, Howard, tells Bob to hurry up and repair his car. Apparently, they have been waiting because their car broke down. Jeep is outside when he sees a massive storm coming their way. The TV inside the diner starts to flicker and the radio doesn't work either. The stranger's phone call disconnects as well. They realize that something is wrong in the city. Just then, an old woman enters the restaurant and is rude to Charlie. She comments that Charlie is a boy's name, maybe true but still rude. Charlie dismisses the remark and continues with her work. Sandra from the other table asks the woman if there's something going on in the city since the electrics are off. The woman answers that she should not care about such things. When Charlie brings her order, she notices her baby bump and casually tells her that the baby will burn and die. Sandra, who's been listening to the conversation, chimes in and tells the woman not to be rude. The old woman yells at Sandra in rage and insults her. Seeing his wife being talked to like that, Howard tries to clap back, but he obviously had no chance against the granny. Sandra knows this and stops him. Suddenly, the granny's pupils dilate and her teeth turn sharp just like the police officer from earlier. She bites a chunk off Howard's neck and flips her table, not so much like an old lady. Everyone in the diner is shaken. Percy smacks the woman with a pan and she goes crazy. She latches onto a wall and walks on the ceiling sending everyone into a panic. Bob takes a rifle and fires some shots at her but misses. When Jeep points his rifle at him, the woman claims that he can kill her, but the baby in Charlie's stomach will surely die. The stranger then shoots the woman dead. Howard is severely injured so they get in the stranger's car to drive to the city. 
But as they start the car, thousands of mosquitoes fill it up, stopping them from going. Just then, the angel arrives at the diner in a police car. Bob asks him to show his teeth to confirm the angel is not like the old woman. The angel then tells him that many people like that woman will approach them now, so they need his help. He takes out the guns he had collected earlier and distributes them among the group. He hands Charlie one too, but asks her to try her best to stay safe. The group then runs inside the diner and barricades it all around. Night falls, and the angel man takes the stranger and Bob to the roof to get a better view of their enemies when they arrive. Just then, a man in an ice cream truck arrives and starts screeching. His limbs and jaw extend, and he charges the diner. The men on the roof shoot him dead, but see several cars approaching their way. The angel man orders them to fire at everyone and not pity them as they are no longer people. One attacker breaks in through the window and drags an injured Howard away. The rest of them jump to save him when the attacker grabs Charlie's hand. It seems as if he specifically came there for her. The angel man arrives and cuts the man's arm off and fires several rounds at the window, killing all the attackers there. Sandra has a panic attack when the angel calms her down, telling her that her husband is dead, which, now that I think about it, is a weird way to calm someone down. Bob is now agitated. They have been killing people with no motive other than self-defense. He demands the angel to tell them the truth. The angel finally tells him that Big Daddy, God, is mad at humans for killing, rioting, sinning, doing all the illegal stuff. Just just the basics. So he has assigned his angels as his personal assassinators to basically kill all of humanity and wipe away any evidence of their existence. Somehow, without any explanation, the baby inside Charlie's belly will be the savior of the world. Who decided that? We don't know. Probably God, but why would he create his own enemy? Again, we don't know. The angel also reveals that he is an angel, which the group didn't know yet, so they are surprised and in disbelief. But they do not ask him to show them a magic trick to prove it. A missed opportunity, if you ask me. Jeep is curious about the angel hierarchy and their lifestyle. The angel man tells him that it's not as great as it sounds. Although he had a pair of wings, he was miserable because God wanted to kill all humans, which was against his beliefs. He believes that among the bad people of the earth are some decent people too, so killing all of humanity would be a little too dramatic, even for God. But God didn't share his views, no, not at all. So now he is sending every angel in existence to possess possess people as vessels to kill the angel man. Also, the angel man has a brother named Gabriel, who is also an angel, but the exact opposite, in the sense that he follows God's order. It is now the following day. Everyone is asleep at the diner when Sandra hears a noise and peeks through the window. She is obviously horrified when she sees her husband crucified to a pole with weird wiggly lumps all over his body. Sandra runs to save him, although it's pretty clear he can't be saved now. The others understand this and try stopping her. The wiggly lumps wiggle more aggressively and eventually explode, letting out acid-like substances from Howard's body. Poor Percy tries saving Sandra and dies in her place. Everyone ties crazy Sandra to a chair as they would when she blames her daughter for all this. Audrey, while playing with the radio, catches a frequency. The news broadcasts that some survivors in the city are fighting against the possessed. She suggests they go there to get help. But according to the angel, they cannot risk leaving and putting the child's life in danger. Charlie later confesses to Jeep about going to the doctors to abort the child a few months ago. She backed out last minute because she thought she could go there any time, but it came to the point that the abortion couldn't be performed anywhere. So basically, she hated the child for existing, and now people are dying to save that unborn kid which is sadly ironic. Later at night, a car parks outside the diner. A man with his child comes out to fill the gas when a group of possessed people attacks them. The stranger jumps down to save the kid, but surprise, surprise, the kid is possessed, and he fell right into their trap. The little brat bites the stranger. Bob and others from inside start removing the barricade to help him. However, the savior angel stops him because that would put Charlie and the baby's life in danger. Audrey jumps off from an opening to help them, but is sworn by the possessed people. What else did she think would happen? Charlie sees the angel doing nothing to save them and takes matters into her own hands. The angel agrees to save Audrey for Charlie's safety. He goes out with two guns, firing several rounds at the possessed. He finally gets to Audrey and they run back inside, narrowly escaping an exploding vehicle. Sometime later, Charlie is startled by the child from earlier who had somehow made it into the diner. He strikes her with a knife, but she deflects it. The knife slips and slices off the kid's fingers. 
The power suddenly goes out and we see the kid strangling Bob. Jeep finally shoots the possessed kid dead. Just then, Charlie goes into labor. Everyone gathers around and helps her. A loud, continuous honking of a war horn rumbles from the sky. Traumatic much? Bob and Jeep are on the roof when they see a large mob of the possessed standing outside the diner. Finally, the savior of the world is born. The people outside the diner wail and cry at the birth. The angel realizes that God has sent down his brother Gabriel to kill the child. Suddenly, Crazy Sandra snatches the baby and threatens everyone to stay away. She wants to give the baby to the people so that they will leave them alone. The angel shoots Sandra dead, and Jeep dives and catches the baby just in time. The door glows and in comes the one and only Gabriel to kill the infant. Bob tries killing a mystical fallen sky angel with a gun, but hey, at least he tried. Gabriel then slices him with his wings, a classic angel move. The good angel sends Audrey, Jeep, and Charlie away with the baby. The possessed people's job was to let the baby never be born, but now that he is here, they are confused as what to do, so they just simply make way for the four to run away. Meanwhile, after some melodramatic conversation about their relationship, the two fight. Guess which one dies? Wrong, Gabriel wins and kills the good angel, after which he sheds a tear because he didn't really want to kill him. It was because of God's order. Pretty good excuse to kill your brother, Gabriel. The ones who escape drive to the survivor's camp they had heard about on the radio. As the good angel dies, the markings on his body transfer to Jeep's, suggesting that Gabriel's purpose is now Jeep's, or something like that. It might also mean that Jeep is now an angel, but he doesn't have any wings yet, so I'm leaning towards no. Anyways, Gabriel soon finds the car and attacks them. Audrey sacrifices her life and takes Gabriel away with him when the car stops. However, the car crashes into a ditch, but somehow, miraculously, all three inside the car come out without much of an injury. They run away from Gabriel, who obviously didn't die in the car crash. He soon catches up. Gabriel is one moment away from killing G, but our good angel rises from the dead, or rather falls down from the dead. Gabriel is surprised when the angel explains that he gave God what he needed, while Gabriel gave him what he wanted. Get the difference? So, God gave him another chance at eternal life. The brothers fight again, and this time, the good angel wins. But since he is the good one, he spares Gabriel's life. The angel tells Jeep that he is the true protector of the infant and flies away. Jeep takes Charlie and the baby to the surviving colony. Humanity finally has a chance to flourish again. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel to see more of these movie summaries.